Robin's exclusive conversation with Christina Applegate and Jamie Lynn Singer. You showed a bit of it to us yesterday. What a powerful friendship. It's such a special, special friendship, as Rebecca and you both said. Christina says that Jamie has allowed her to be honest with others and, more importantly, with herself about her emotions facing MS, and that openness has helped her cope. Christina, to your left. After four decades in the spotlight, this morning, Christina Applegate with good friend Jamie Lynn Sigler by her side. She's doing this because I have the, the tremor, so she's Well, also because I love her. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Candid about her life since being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2021. Do you feel the love, Christina? I mean, yes, yes. I, I live kind of in hell. That raw honesty <laughs> infused with humor um, carrying her through. And when we saw you last at the Emmys presenting, and I kind of just say the emotions that I felt <laughs> when you came out on that stage. Thank you so much. Oh my God. You're totally shaming me with disability by standing up. It's fine. Okay. Um, Were you able to take in the moment, the standing ovation and everything? Yeah, I was really, I actually kind of blacked out. Um, and I, people said, oh, you were so funny. And I'm like, I don't even know what I said. And I felt, really beloved and it was really a beautiful thing. Then, I'm just gonna say this, that audience stood up for everybody. <laughs> oh, come on. There's something I have to confess. The seven-time Emmy nominee was filming the final season of her Netflix show, Dead to Me, when she noticed something was wrong. My symptoms had started in the early part of 2021 and it was like literally just tingling on my toes. And by the time we started shooting in the summer of that same year, I was being brought to set in a wheelchair. Like, I couldn't walk that far. <clears throat> so I had to tell everybody because I needed help. You know, I needed someone to help me stand and I needed someone to help. Sorry. I needed someone to help me to get there. Mm -hmm. so, okay. And they were wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I'd probably had it for many, many years. When I do you mean, think I you first had, when do you, probably had how it? How long do you think what, you've had it without realizing? six or seven years. I think, yeah. I think I've noticed, especially the first season, we'd be shooting and I would like buckle, like my, my leg would buckle. I really just kind of put it off as, as being tired or I'm dehydrated or mm. it's the weather or, you know, and then nothing would happen for like months and I didn't pay attention. But when it hit this hard, I had to pay attention. She credits her former co-star and good friend, Selma Blair, for urging her to get tested for MS. Whatever happened to my cool, confident roommate? Mm, it's a big facade. Blair was also diagnosed with a degenerative disease of the central nervous system in 2018. She goes, you need to be checked for MS. I said, no, it's really the odds, the two of us from the same movie, come on, that's not gonna be, that doesn't happen. Mm. She knew. She encouraged you to? She, if, if not for her, it could have been way worse. Oh, it's like the sisterhood. Yeah. The sisterhood that you don't really want to be a part of. Jamie was starring in The Sopranos when she was diagnosed with MS at just 20 years old. Believe it or not, the world doesn't revolve around you. The two have bonded over their shared disease, supporting each other through its unique challenges. You're in different places and you're helping each other because I love how you've given her permission to go, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And you didn't used to, you wouldn't say that before. No. Never. She keeps me going because I'm the one who's like, <laughs> you know, I'm flipping the bird all day long at this thing and I'm angry. I'm really, really pissed. You know, I was a dancer and a runner and I got all these things and that I love and a mom and, and it's like, mmm. And she's like, okay, I have you and you are going to be okay. Like life, you're going to be okay. And, and if not for her, I don't, really honestly don't know. Mm. For so long, I've been celebrated for being the strong one and the positive one that it, it felt like mm. I was not that if I would admit that some days were hard. But she has really pushed me to be able to say that because I th thought I was letting people down if I would talk about mm. how hard it was sometimes. And it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. It's not my favorite disease. I've had a couple. <laughs> it's not my favorite one. So are you still in a grieving process? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not putting a time stamp on it. Yeah. I don't Good think it you. ends. Yeah. I'm never going to wake up and go, this is awesome. No. I'm just going to tell you that. 
Like it's just not gonna happen. I wake up and I'm reminded of it every day. So there's, it's not gonna happen. But I might get to a place where I will function a little bit better. Right now I'm isolating. And that's kind of how I'm dealing with it is by like not going anywhere because I don't want to do it. It's hard. They call it the invisible disease, you know, but mm. it's going to be very lonely. Yeah. Because mm. it's hard to explain to people, you know, like, yeah. like I'm in excruciating pain, but I'm just used to it now. There's this little bit of hope that maybe one day we won't live with this. Mm. You know, it's hard to let yeah, that I'm waiting. go. I'm waiting. That's why I'm sleeping. I want someone to just <laughs> wake me up when it's over. Just wake me up when we can be like, you're good. Thank you. The two friends are launching a podcast, Messy. So this is our conversation about stuffs. Where they will welcome their famous friends and co-stars to get real about the messiness of life. You're really eavesdropping on an intimate conversation. That's all it is. And to me, those are my favorite podcasts where you feel like you just got to like somehow listen in on a conversation with people. There's no format, no agenda, no questions that were coming. And it's messy. It's for sure a mess. Yeah. What is it that you want people? Why should they listen? I think one, to, to feel seen if they're going yeah. through this, to feel heard, even if it's not MS. You know, I've been playing a character called Christina for 40 years, you know, who I, wanted everybody to think I was because it's easier. But like, this is like, it's kind of my coming out party. Yeah. Like this mm -hmm. is who, this is the person I've been this whole time. I said that to her mm -hmm. from day one. Because I was, I was kind of putting on a little, a little act for everybody for so long. And, and cause I didn't, I just thought that was easier to be a light, be funny, be light. Don't make people feel uncomfortable and I don't care. So that's, that's kind of what this is. Too, After we you know? recorded our first episode and we listened to it, the first thing I did was call her. And I was like, I am so excited for people to get to know this Christina. I just feel like I have a front row seat for, I know it's hard and I know it's hard to see, but like a really beautiful chapter for her. I really believe that. Well, Christina Applegate, it's nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Again, yes, yeah. yes. Nice to finally, to finally meet, meet you. Yeah. yeah. What I really did feel as many times as I've been around her, I was I was meeting Christina for the first time in many ways, and many people have been asking, "Will she act again?" It's a tough question for her. As you can tell, she's her initial response is no, and she has struggled so much physically. But it's keep in mind, it's all she's ever known. Do you know her first on-camera credit came at just three months old oh on the soap opera <laughs> days? of our lives. So this is all that she's ever known. Jamie says she's got a role for her. She's got an idea mm. for a show, but Christina's like, you one know. One step at a time. One, one step at a time. Hear from so many people, uh, families who are going through this, and it's different for everyone. Yeah. And that's what they really signify, because they're at different stages mm -hmm. where they are right now. And we're gonna have so much more about these two, and you can see it tonight on Nightline, and then their first episode of their honest, <laughs> funny, and moving podcast, I've heard many of them, Messy, it drops next Tuesday, March 19th, wherever you get your podcast, and whether or not you have MS, there's a message in this podcast, Messy. Oh, mm -hmm. we can see that. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, Robin. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.